like let's take autonomous vehicles as the example. Uh, we will always have scenarios where a car encounters a roadworks or weird junction or particular scenario with other vehicles that it just doesn't quite know how to handle. And so in those scenarios, the, the way it works is the car will fail by stopping. It'll just fail safe as everything mm -hmm. should. And in that scenario, it's collected a bunch of data and it's going to need a human to come in and say, okay, you're looking at this, this, and this, and the way you should react is this. And so that element of randomness will require consistent human input. Now, a decade out from now, we're probably going to have a lot more flying vehicles. There'll be essentially human-sized drones or autonomous helicopters, autonomous quadricopters. And imagine these will be very, very common and increasingly automated. All of those will require exactly the same types of human input that the cars will. The other trend that we're seeing that's somewhat terrifying for some people and somewhat exciting for others is that we are making AI more physical. We're providing AI with bodies. I say we, I mean like us, the royal mm -hmm. us. Um, by way of humanoid robots, by way of manufacturing, by way of many other items, even pins that we wear on the body, and all of these types of devices, particularly things like humanoid robots, will need consistent human input over a very, very long term to ensure that they're safe, to ensure that they are helpful, and to ensure that they understand how to interact with the world, but also the people and the animals within the world. And so the short version of that really long answer is I expect the expertise thing to become a tiny part of the puzzle, and I expect the kind of real world um, context and steering and kind of like human input to help these things interact with the real world to be almost all of it 10 years 